There's a lot of fear that operates in a place like the film school, the afters, as it is still called, but I think it's going to change its name soon. Um, there's a lot of fear, and, and that fear is also out there in the industry, although it may go under very many different kinds of disguises, and people may not call it fear. There's a, a lack of willingness to actually go to those places that one must go to to find compelling characters, fearless characters, who do what dramatic characters do. And their characters, dramatic characters, are characters who fight for something. You know? They are striving for something that is absolutely urgent and important for them to have to deal with now, otherwise everything's going to fall apart. I mean, it will cost lives, it will overturn everything that is important to them emotionally and every other way. We don't like to touch on those sorts of things, it would seem, within the industry. But maybe we would touch on them if it was all set up slightly differently, because I don't know that there's even enough time given for writers to dig deep enough to find those kinds of resonances within a story and within a character's psyche. When I was writing full-time, freelance writer, it seemed to me that every producer I worked with wanted the script yesterday. Oftentimes scripts were, were taken up and produced because a deal had been done for a co-production. And you could have situations, I've been in situations where there were two scripts. One was almost ready to produce but had no deal. And the other one was far away from being producible but had a deal. And they'd make the one that had the deal. And I, I won't mention any titles, but I could. Uh, the ones that had the deal that were not ready to be produced failed in every way. You know, and it's also part of the psychology of screenwriters that I think screenwriters are people, and generally writers, writers for the most part, are people that have no proof of their own existence until something is actually produced or published. You, know, you can sit alone in a room for a long, long time, and on the rare occasions when you go out to a social occasion or, you know, attend a dinner party or something like that, and somebody says, and what do you do? It's almost embarrassing at times to say, I'm a writer, because the very next question is, oh, what are you working on? And whatever it is you're working on, the fact is, is that you're working on it. So what? What have you made? What have you published? Anything I know? And if you're working on something and you've been doing it for years, it's like you don't exist. And I think a lot of writers fold or give in to that, to that kind of fear that comes with wondering what their identity is. How do I present myself in the world? Well, the way I do that is to get this thing out there, to get it made. And um, I think lots and lots of Australian scripts get made too soon because writers just need the proof. They need the validation that they exist. And production is the way they do that. So they look for producers. And they apply to funding bodies for development grants. And they try to get a deals happening when what they really should be doing is forming more, ever more intimate and potent relationships with their characters. I think every Australian screenwriter that's worth a damn, at the very least, to remind themselves, because I think they do need to be reminded, a lot of them, should have over their computer screen like on the wall, just over the place where they work, a sign in as big a letters as they can print out. The, 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 the sentence, it's the characters, stupid. We forget that so easily. The characters are what we care about, if we care about anything at all. And if I don't care, why bother? And mostly Australian audiences, more and more, haven't 
bothered. I've read so many scripts that have received funding by the major funding bodies, and not first draft funding, second and third draft. They've received funding two, three times before, and they're coming back for more money on the strength of scripts that aren't even good enough to get first draft funding. I'm thinking, what has all this money been spent on? You have scripts in which there isn't even a problem that occurs until page 65 of a 100-page script. And it's solved by page 73, and never any other problem ever presents itself in the, whole, in the whole story. You know, why does this happen? Are Australian writers that ignorant? No, I don't think so. I don't think it really has to do with ignorance. I think it has to do with fear. I think that writers instinctively understand that if they're going to tell a dramatic story, they're going to embark upon a journey that ultimately, unless they, unless they resort to formula, they're going to embark on a journey that's going to take them places that are going to be incredibly challenging in terms of what they're going to have to reveal, in terms of what they're going to have to sacrifice, in terms of their own being, like where the story is it coming from? Where is this story that you're telling? Where is it coming from? What does it have to do with you? You have to expose these things, at least to yourself. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to go this place. And they also know that if they take on a problem and they start a script off, as all dramatic stories that are worth a damn do, if they start with a problem, they know instinctively that that problem has to get worse. Because if the problem is solved as soon as it arrives and a character acts and solves it, end of story. The thing about a dramatic problem is that it gets worse because character tries to solve it. And that problem then builds and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and as it gets bigger and more complicated and more dangerous with ever increasing threat or risk for the character, the energy, the emotional energy of the story intensifies. And it's that very intensity that freaks most writers out freaks them out because you get to a point where you are no longer in control of that intensity. In fact, it can get to a point where you have no idea about what to do with that problem that has built to a shape, built itself into a shape where you have no idea how to deal with it anymore. But you have to deal with it because if you don't deal with it, you can't finish the script. And you've invested three, four, five or more months of your life in writing this thing and now you're stopped by the seemingly unresolvable problem? What do I do? What do I do? Most hacks, sorry, most writers will try to think of a film that had a similar problem and they'll borrow the solution of that film and use it in their film. This is the essence of formula writing. It's anathema to any kind of truly artistic or creative transformation that may be possible, not only within the story, in the lives of the characters, but also in the life of the storyteller. Drama is about change, and that change operates not just in the story, but in the experience of the storyteller as he or she finds that story while going on that journey with those characters in that world. You see, it really isn't about self-expression. Dramatic storytelling, myth-making in the contemporary world is about self-alteration. Please come through. You're part of the drama. Part of the drama. Yeah. You this know, is an interview gotta, about drama. Life is full of dramas. <laughs> Life is a drama, my brother. <laughs>